Hi, everyone. Welcome to Write Sleep Sleep Chats. This is a series of short videos featuring Write Sleep creator Dr. Stasha Gomanek, answering some of our frequently asked questions, as well as others you may not have thought of to ask. We'll tackle one question at a time to help you improve your sleep and ultimately improve your health. So, Stasha, can you define for us what healthy sleep is? This is a bit difficult because we're really all making it up. So the sleep experts who tell you what sleep is about are giving you their best guess. And I think it's really important to start with, we did not make this. Even though we are impressed with the Elon Musks of the world, no human has been able to make a living thing. So even if we make AI, the complexity of a biologic living being is miraculous. I don't care what your belief system is, there is an awe to the fact that even at the very basic biochemical level, this is a miracle. So in the background, we're all making up stories. So my current viewpoint is of what defines sleep is, we really are self-repairing, self-assembling living things. That means 16 hours we use our body and then eight hours we need to repair it. And we have so many examples currently of people who aren't repairing that you can make comments about what would happen to you if you did not get into certain phases of sleep based on patients and clients that I have where I see their sleep study. So that means there are two ways to look at how you figure something out. There's the engineering mind, which is, I want to accomplish the following thing. How would I do that? I take a biologic organism that is self-repairing. Do I have that organism repair itself all during the day? And would it have to stop being able to use its body or its brain while it was trying to repair things? Or do you have it using its body and its brain for X period of time and then switch over into a repair phase where we sort of detach from here up and therefore we can repair all sorts of systems that I would usually be using to see, to uh, drive a car, to talk to my husband, so if you look at it from an engineering mind, it makes perfect sense that we have to turn off a bunch of parts. That means there's a self-piloting. It's just like the idea that we have a pilot in a plane and then we have an automatic pilot and you have sort of a machine running the plane for brief periods of time. There's a setup in the brain that says, I'm gonna control all the basic parts, breathing, heart rate, positioning of the body. I'm gonna do all of that at this much lower level and everything else can be turned into a repair mode. Okay, so with all that preamble, the only other way to get at this is to do recordings of normal people sleeping. So the definition right now of normal sleep depends on who you talk to, but there are studies that were done in Stanford medical students and college students, starting when the first lab, sleep lab opened in the 19, early 70s, that showed that most normal young people sleep for eight hours. They spend four hours in what is called deep sleep. And that deeper sleep means that we get paralyzed and our wave patterns of this part up here, where they were putting the electrodes to measure the electrical waves of the brain, the electrical pattern in these deeper phases is different. There are two of those deep sleep epochs or time frames. The first is called slow wave sleep because the electroencephalogram waves are big and high and slow. So slow wave sleep is commonly called deep sleep now on all the sleep trackers. But the scientists who write about sleep and the sleep experts call both slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep, deep sleep. And they call the other phases of sleep, light sleep. So we have two hours of slow wave sleep, 
and two hours of rapid eye movement sleep as the normals. In actual fact, we break up these deeper phases where we are paralyzed into small blocks that are usually much less than an hour. And we do several of those blocks in several phases throughout the night. And most of the time between 10 and two, most of the deep sleep that's being done is slow wave sleep, so-called deep sleep. And that's what the trackers are showing you. They're showing you when they get when you get paralyzed and they're matching that to what your heart rate is. It is my belief that the first half of the night is more about sympathetic tone that's running sleep. The autonomic nervous system is very much involved in what's happening while we're sleeping. The second half of sleep is usually where rapid eye movement sleep happens. The other phases of sleep, our level of attention to our surroundings is higher, meaning I'm more likely to wake from a loud noise or from light. So there's a part of the brain in between the brain stem and the rest, which is the cortex, that actually dials up and down the level of attention to sound and sight and feeling. That means we can actually turn down the amount that we pay attention. That means when I tell you, gee, it's really not your partner's snoring that is ruining your sleep. It is that the level of sleep that you are in is not correct. You're constantly waking because you hear the snoring. But if we get your chemistry right, your brain will say, oh, I know what that noise is. You don't have to wake up from that. That's just Jimmy snoring. That means there's a part of the attention to the outside world that goes up in between episodes of deep sleep where we're very inattentive to the surrounding world. And you can imagine if we slept outside and we weren't protected like every other animal on the planet, you have to intersperse these very deep, paralyzed, very vulnerable epochs or times in between where we can kind of not wake to consciousness, but be more aware of our surroundings, roll over, not be paralyzed, listen and make sure that everybody's safe. And then we go back into deep sleep again. So that's the current definition of normal sleep. There are a lot of things being said by the sleep experts that are not true. And I know that because I've gotten the chemistry to go back to normal. So for instance, there's this whole dogma about, oh, early, arise, early risers and night owls, and that you just have a certain circadian clock. What I've seen in my clients and my patients means that that's not true. You get the chemistry right, everybody falls asleep around 10, wakes up at six in adulthood. And I've seen people who are permanently sleeping during the day, actually flip over and be able to sleep at night. It's not simple and it's not one change in neurotransmitters and it's not just about vitamins. It's also about exposure to outdoors. So there are lots of things that are being told to us like, oh, I've always been a night owl. No, that's not really normal. You fall asleep at 2 a.m. every night. If you've tried to go to sleep at 10 and you're not able to, that means your neurochemistry is not right for sleep. And I think I'll stop there and we'll talk more about it in another sleep chat. Sounds good. Yes, I was one of those who thought I was just a night owl and you've proven to me that that was wrong. <laughs> so, yay. All right. Well, thank you, Stasha. And thank you everyone for joining us. Please subscribe to the channel, like and share our videos. You can find more information as well as the Right, right Sleep program at drgomanak.com. Remember, we see our doctor once a year because we heal our bodies every night.